scheduled for three five-minute rounds for the Bacon Bama World Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, the man standing to my left and fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet seven inches tall and weighed in at 144 and one half pounds. He is a boxer wrestler with a professional record of eight victories opposite a single defeat fighting out of Paris, France. Tom Fire Kid Duke His opponent stands across the cage to my right and fights out of the blue corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall, his official weight and even 145 pounds. He is a well-rounded fighter, his record flawless at eight and two with eight wins via knockout. Fighting out of Paris, France, Teddy Snatch Violet. Your referee, Mark Goddard. So as you heard there, Mark Goddard giving them their rules. So this world title, <laughs> Teddy Violet. Tom Duquesnoy, two Frenchmen from Paris, vying for the title. I love uh, Mark Goddard's instructions inside the ring. There's no charisma about it at all. <laughs> do as I say, say as I do. So Duquesnoy looking to take Duquesnoy, taking center cage, looking to tie up with Violet. Good sprawl and brawl by Duke Noir. Get himself inside, staying right in the pocket. Yes, and a low chopping kick to Teddy Violet's leg. Oh, oh. the left hand and the hook, and immediately Violet goes for the, the takedown, and that's because of that beautiful left hook yeah, from Duke Noir. And you saw how he tried to shoot. He tried to move his feet to shoot, but he couldn't. His body had already started shutting down, his legs had shut off on him. And he fell right through his face as he was trying to take a shot because he, that punch was so stiff. Wow, great guard pass game. Oh, unlucky there for Duke Noir, but the speed of these two men, Frank. So Violet, the slightly taller man. He comes forward with the right and left, but Duke Noir slips out of the way. And it's as we saw in his previous fight, he's so mobile and quick thinking, isn't he? Great reversal, gets swept to the ground and ends up getting back on top again. Duquesnoy has got great position, great strength, good tight. I love how his legs are peeled in there. He's making sure there's no chance for him to get back to full guard. Yeah, it's been in the opening two minutes, if you look at it, it's been a real test for VLA, hasn't it? If he has got to, he's got to pick his position. He's got to understand which way he's going to go. He doesn't. He doesn't. Every time he goes one way, Duquesnoy is going another way. He, he's, he's unable to catch him. At this point. Yes, there's fast transitions wow. from Duquesnoy. Great to a full mount. Looking for his back. Misses the back. Jumps to full mount. Now just sitting here, taking his time. Vila is right now. It seems to be severely overmatched, even though he's eight now. Yes, yes, but as we said when, when we had the pleasure of watching Duke Noir last time around, it's, it's his, his thought process, his movement, everything. It's, he seems to be one step ahead of you, as he was in his previous fight with, when he got the, the, the knockout in the second round. But again, even though, as we said, you know, Violet seems a bit overmatched here, it's incredible to think that we've got a young man of 20 against a young man of 22. <laughs> Yeah, the game's changing. But with just two minutes left, the fire kid, Duke Noir, has been totally dominant in this opening round so far.
And again, we've talked about it earlier, Frank, it, it's, it's fighting in your comfort zone, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Being in a space where, where everything is comfortable, you understand what's going to happen, where you're going to be, how is it going to be there, and then understanding that when you're under duress, it's real, not real duress. You're not really under duress yet. There's still a little bit more to go, and that's how you're able to get yourself out of it. You can why is that, is that understanding. Wow, great knees by both guys, and they both have taken them like nothing's happened. Yeah, and the other problem for Violet is here, when he starts to swing and trying to get his momentum going, Duquenois is so good upright as well. And with, with under the minute left now, um, Viole, they're going to have to get him back to his corner. And what can they do to turn this around? Because upright or on the ground, he's been bossed. They got. They have to tell him he's got to punch himself in. They know that Duke Wall is going to start to punch. So Viole's got to punch himself in to get to a takedown and up on top. And so far, we've only seen him on his back or on his, or on his feet striking. He's not winning either battle, and it's not like he's, he's slightly outmatched, he's overly outmatched in the focal position. Let's see what we can do on top of him. He has to get on top of Deacon Williams here. Well, he's got just 30 seconds of this round to survive, but it's the fire kid, Tom Deacon-Noir, who's dominated this opening round, really. I mean, to be fair, if you're looking for positives for Violet, um, that left hand he took so well, yeah, because it was a, a beautiful left hook. Snapped his head around and he just took it, got up and kept moving. Oh, some downward elbows right in this last 10 seconds to emphasize the control of Duke Noir in this round. Calm and patient. Viole is starting to fall apart a little bit. You can see him in the corner, you can see his cornerman. He's starting to get a little concerned. I love the movement of Duke Noir as well to slip away. And his feet are very quick, he stays low. And on his toes, so anytime that the Viole shoots on him, even though he's coming forward, he's still able to kick his legs back to get out of that out of that takedown. And he slips from the waist so well, and there's that uppercut that lands on the left that's just missed. His, his transitions, his movement, his timing are all superb. So Teddy Viole, really, he's got to start, find a way to start asking questions of Duke Noir, hasn't he? Yeah, Duke, right now, Duke Noir has answered everything he's put before him. We gotta see what else he has in his repertoire. Otherwise, we'll see a lot more of the same thing going on. But you know what, Frank? I don't think it's gonna happen. You look at the body language and the facial expressions of both men, it tells its own story. This so, is only the second round. <laughs> so, Teddy Viole, can he mount an offensive against the super confident fire kid? Wow. Four punch combo and three punches hit and one kick. Slicks, but right between the hands, perfect position, stepping himself up. Duke Noir's trying to pick up the pace in this fight. And the low kick to the lead leg. And that's what I love about him, Frank, is it's the movement. He's never in one place. As you said, it's angles with him, the way he attacks from angles. So stalking his man from the center of the cage now. Pops out the jab. And he's loose and relaxed. And, and, and Violet, it's a nice takedown, but he seems very stiff and tense to me. <laughs> and now, immediately, Duke Noir is immediately looking for the stretch. Trying to push himself out. Gets his legs back. Steps over. Full mount. The, the kid is just genius with his athletic ability and his hip motion. Great to a triangle. Okay, triangle's locked in now. Can he get the arm across? He's got us reinforced. Push the elbow. This could be it here, Frank. Those elbows are coming as well, softening him up to the face with these punches as well. Oh, he's resetting the triangle. He keeps resetting it as well to make sure a little bit tighter. So right now he's not finishing because he's yes, not he's there. Yes, he's tapped. He's tapped. What a wow. superb finish. And Frank, to be honest and to be fair to VLA, you mentioned the term overmatch. Yeah. That's not an insult to him. It's just no. we're looking at a wonder kid here. This kid is. Dukenwa is incredible. The kid's incredible. They're, he's just one of those guys that he's got so much action. You don't, folks at home, you don't understand. Unless you play in a, in a really strong sport jiu-jitsu game, you don't understand how tough what he just did. But to come in, to sweep himself over on top from getting taken down, and rotate into a, an immediate triangle, reset because it's not tight enough, 
set it again, and then see how he turns his body over to 90 degree angle, so now he can finish. And that's what I was trying to say, he's not gonna be able to finish until he gets to 90 degree, gets to 90 degree, and that thing's over. Like he's, just, he's just incredible. This, this guy's got a long future, a very long future in this game. Well, one thing's for certain, that's a hell of a thing. 20 years of age and already a world champion. An incredible win. Second round once again. It's a happy hunting ground Bama for the fire kid. And he's going to be crowned world champion here after an incredibly impressive performance. Tom, the fire kid, Duquenois. And Violet, he shrugs his shoulders to his corners and say, what could I do? Ladies and gentlemen, the bout ends at 1 minute 29 seconds of the second round. We have a tap out. Your winner by submission via triangle. And now, Bama World Featherweight Champion, Tom Firekid Duquenois.